Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. It's February the 8th, 2024. Teofimo Lopez has just been awarded the decision over Jermaine Ortiz. Right, two judges had the fight, 115-113 for Teofimo. The other judge had Teofimo winning by more than that. Now, I'm sore right now very sore. I thought the scoring was a travesty. I thought Jermaine Ortiz wins this fight by a few rounds. I thought the performance was gutsy. In my members only video on this fight, um, part of the hedge was Jermaine Ortiz at 8-1 to one to win by decision. Right? I believe he did just that in the ring Unfortunately, the scoring seems to have been a celebrity fest straight out of Las Vegas, right? Let's talk about it. Understand, um, this is an audacious performance. Jermaine Ortiz is a righty. He studied the film. It's clear. No one's going to tell me otherwise. He studied the film and he understood that there is a blueprint fight. Another guy who got ripped off fighting Teofimo Lopez. This is not to disparage Teofimo, who is an excellent fighter. But in the Sander Martin fight, Martin is a southpaw. Martin has an educated back foot. Martin is pumping a jab on his back foot. He's catching Teofimo on the way in. And he's turning Teofimo. In other words, as Teofimo comes up to him, he's able to pivot outside of the pocket, right? He keeps a pocket from forming. Teofimo, at the end of the day, is more comfortable with a pocket. He's more comfortable as a counterpuncher. As a lead puncher where he has to come find you, where he has to try to cut off the rain. He isn't the same fighter. So understand, that Sander Martin fight, officially, Teofimo won that by decision. Right? I'm just telling you, I thought Sander Martin won that fight. There is a post-fight video that I made that's here online talking about the fact that Sander Martin won that fight. Right? Certainly exceeded everyone's expectations. Then, of course... Teofimo fights another lefty, Josh Taylor. Now, Josh Taylor is just too much into fighting, not boxing, right? At the end of the day, boxing's a craft. You have to check your ego at the door. You have to do what's effective. You can't let some smug opponent who's daring you to jump in the pocket and trade get you to jump in the pocket and trade, right? That's where Teofimo is at his best. Josh Taylor, unfortunately, and you saw this in the Jack Catterall fight, needs to prove he's alpha, even when it's to his detriment. So he's the southpaw who jumps in the pocket, trades with Teofimo, gets caught with great counters, Right, Teofimo, when you're pursuing him, is a handful, especially when Teofimo is the shorter guy, and he can actually bend and get underneath you. Now, this fight, you had an audacious performance. It was a winning performance on my scorecard. You had righty, Jermaine Ortiz, and he's ambidextrous, but understand, he's a natural righty. He fought Teofimo in the amateurs in 2015 and lost to Teofimo. Right? Here he is against Teofimo, who's a devastating counterpuncher, and he decides he's going to channel the most successful fight against Teofimo. Right? It's even more successful to me than the George Cambosis fight. And that's that Sander Martin fight. So Jermaine Ortiz goes southpaw. He stays in the middle of the ring. He's shooting a jab. He's rarely over by the side. When Teofimo gets too close to him, he clinches Teofimo. 
right, doesn't want to have a fight break out. He wants to keep it a boxing match. Timothy Bradley does an excellent job on the telecast talking about how Ortiz always slides to his right to get away from Teofimo Lopez, who, on his front foot, is not adept, doesn't know how to cut off the ring. Understand, the foot speed gap between the guys here is profound. Now, on the telecast, we keep hearing about what a great athlete Teofimo Lopez is, right? The commentators keep saying, oh, he's twitchy, right? You know, he's, he's a great athlete. Folks, part of athleticism are your legs. There is a huge, and I mean, it's the story of the fight. There is a huge foot speed gap here. It's huge. Now, truth be told, I thought the, the likeliest outcome was going to be Teofimo by KO. I didn't think Jermaine Ortiz, who ends up trading against Lomachenko, right? Ortiz jumps out to a lead in that fight and then is hanging around the pocket too much against a shorter opponent. Right, doesn't stay on his back foot outside the pocket to win the fight by decision. No, he comes up to Lomachenko, ends up getting outboxed. You notice that there's a coordination gap in that fight. Loma is actually more, uh, let's just say, athletic, can at least match Jermaine Ortiz's foot speed. Here, Teofimo can't. The guy on the telecast that they're touting as some great athlete isn't below the waist. He doesn't have the rhythm to run over against a mobile back foot opponent and cut off the ring. He couldn't do it against Sander Martin. That fight went the distance. He couldn't do it here against Jermaine Ortiz. So understand, there's a guy, Mark Kriegel, on the telecast. He's scoring the fight. He's ESPN Plus's version of Harold Letterman, if you remember the scorekeeper from the HBO days. And they go to him, and he correctly has Jermaine Ortiz winning the fight for most of the fight. Right? Understand, this is a low-volume affair. It's not like Teofimo is landing a lot of meaningful punches. Quite frankly, it's not like either guy is landing a lot of meaningful punches. Now, the crowd is out for blood. Understand, as Shakur Stevenson has learned, right, we today in boxing, and this will come and go, right, like everything else, but the current fad in boxing is to love guys on their front foot. Right? We want to see Benavides. This is not a Pernell Whitaker era. Back foot, defense, make you miss, fighters dancing, you can't stop him from dancing. This isn't that era. Right? This is an era that has forgotten about Muhammad Ali. This is an era where Every other heavyweight is 6'5", 6'6", 6'7", right? Wilder, Zhili Zhang, AJ, Tyson Fury, 6'9", right? Every heavyweight is big. We want to see punches landed. We want to see guys staggered. We don't want to see pretty boys, right? Guys without a mark on their face. Guys who look like they thought about how to comb their hair before they entered the ring. Right? Ali beats Liston. Ali says right after the fight, he says, look at me. I'm as pretty as a girl. Understand, that's old then. That doesn't sell now. So here is Jermaine Ortiz, the challenger, fighting the champion. And he's boxing the socks off of him. And the crowd's restless. Right? It's clear that the crowd isn't appreciating the defensive mastery, the lateral movement. The fact that when Teofimo gets within the area code of Jermaine Ortiz, Ortiz is able to tie him up. 
right? The only thing the crowd seemed to appreciate was there's a moment, I think it's like in the second or third round, where Ortiz jumps up on Teofimo in the corner and then riddles him with shots and then backs away. But understand, the reason Teofimo's in the corner is the same reason Ali gets in the corner or up on the ropes against Jimmy Young. It's because Teofimo understood in the middle of the ring he could not find Jermaine Ortiz. So he then goes over to the ropes trying to lull Ortiz into the pocket to fight his fight. Understand, as the crowd is booing Jermaine Ortiz, Mark Kriegel is reporting that he is Ortiz winning the fight. Folks, it's a masterful performance. This is the righty who goes southpaw. The entire fight is on his back foot, is making Teofimo look desperate, is making Teofimo look too flat-footed. Now, to give Teofimo some credit, Teofimo does figure out that what he has to start doing is dancing his way in. In other words, he has to run over to Jermaine Ortiz, right? And kind of dance with him so he can then get the rhythm to throw the punches. But understand, you know, Jermaine Ortiz is sliding to his right to get out of the pocket. Understand a more experienced fighter would just randomly throw left hooks to prevent Ortiz from using that same escape route. Teofimo, at this stage of his career, doesn't know how to do that. He doesn't know how to stop a mobile opponent from moving away from him, from not getting pinned up on the ropes. Let me say this too. There have been a lot of fighters in history. I'm just going to name a famous one who really symbolizes a certain fight style. You don't have the Mike Tyson fight. You just don't have it. Where a guy is able to stay away from Tyson. Like Sander Martin stayed away from Teofimo Lopez. Like Jermaine Ortiz stayed away from Teofimo Lopez tonight. So let me just say this. I did expect Teofimo to win by knockout. The hedge I had was Jermaine Ortiz by decision at 8-1. to one. Even though I didn't deserve to win this bet, I should have. Folks, this is a robbery. The only question late in this fight was, is Jermaine Ortiz going to last to go the distance, right? He fades in the Loma fight. He's off to a great start, and you're asking the question, can he maintain this? He does. The fight's low volume for both. Who's the guy dictating the style in the ring? It's Jermaine Ortiz. Right? He has Teofimo following him around like a lost puppy. He's the one with the ring generalship, Jermaine Ortiz. He's the one making Teofimo miss. He's the one tying up Teofimo when Teofimo gets up close. So as in the Sander Martin fight, Teofimo here, in my opinion, gets an undeserved decision. Right, folks? This fight shouldn't have been 115-113. Teofimo Lopez... Right? No, I would say that Jermaine Ortiz wins this fight by at least four rounds. I'm thinking Ortiz 116-112. Let me hear your scorecard in the comment section of this YouTube video. Right? Let me also say to um, <clears throat> my members here online, I'll try to do better. Right? I should have thought about the idea of a opponent getting ripped off after outboxing Teofimo Lopez because it's happened already. 
in the Sander Martin fight. Right here, it's really striking because in that Sander Martin fight, by the way, Martin even gets a knockdown in that fight. Uh, in that Sander Martin fight, Sander Martin is fighting as a lefty because he is a lefty. Understand when you see Jermaine Ortiz here throwing a mobile jab, understand he's doing it with his off hand. I mean, he's doing it in an off stance. Right? That right jab is actually his dominant hand. And he's fighting a champ, again, in an off stance. And he has Lopez completely befuddled to the point where Lopez, in the middle of the fight, is motioning to the crowd. He's motioning to uh, Ortiz to come fight him. Right? Understand, that's how much the fight had gotten away from the pocket-centric fight that Lopez wanted. Right? So I'm going to boo the judges here. I'm just going to say, not surprisingly, the people who should have won on an 8-1 to one Ortiz by decision end up losing in a match that took place Super Bowl week in Las Vegas. Right? If I'm Ortiz, I have to feel robbed. I should be wearing the belt tonight. If I'm Lopez, I have to be honest with myself. I have to realize that that Sander Martin fight, whether they gave me the decision or not, right? That Sander Martin fight is the blueprint against me. I have a problem with slick southpaws, with back feet, who can throw a jab and who have lateral movement, and who can keep the fight in the middle of the ring. Right? I'm not made for that. That's the fight I saw. Let me hear from you. Uh, obviously, I'm a sore loser. I'm a loser tonight. Right? Um, it's a streak. I was a loser. I had the under 10 and a half on the Batsui fight. That was a barn burner, but it went the distance. And I had Conor Ben by KO. He won the fight, but not by KO. So I'm on a losing streak here. I'm bitter. You know, I don't mind losing a fight. Right? My, my wallet minds, but I don't mind when I truly lose the fight. I thought I should have won tonight. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. If you're a Teofimo Lopez fan... If you believe he won the fight and you want to point to parts in this fight that you feel he dominated, go ahead and do so in the comment section of this video. Understand the best thing to happen for Lopez in this fight was a headbutt. That's how Ortiz gets badly cut. Understand at that point, Ortiz is winning the fight and starting to pull away. Then he gets a headbutt that leads to a cut in a bad place, right? Understand, it's the headbutt. That's Teofimo Lopez's best moment in this fight. An accidental moment, right? But for that headbutt, Ortiz's, in my opinion, win would have been even more dominant. That's the fight I saw. Let me hear about the fight you saw in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.